Hey guys, what's up? Red Panda Mining here, back with another video. Alright guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Monero hard fork that just happened. As of making this video, it's been about, I would say, a day or so now. So, I'm going to be talking about the hash rate, block times, the what entailed in the hard fork, and price, and all that kind of stuff. But first, let's talk about the massive hash rate that has dropped off from the Monero network. So, example. I took a screenshot last night and the network hash rate was about 950 mega hash. I believe it was over uh, one giga hash at one point a couple days ago. But now that the fork happened, the roughly rough estimate of the hash rate right now is 163 mega hash total network hash rate so it dropped i would say it dropped uh 85 percent <laughs> the whole network hash rate dropped 85 percent and now as of making this video i'm going to refresh it here we are at about 700 mega hash going down so you guys can probably see that it's like it's averaging out I'm gonna explain why that's happening after if after I show you guys what dropped off the hash rate so uh, on nanopool for example you can see March 9th it was at 50 50 mega hash and then when the hard fork happened it dropped down to about half of that so 27 mega hash uh, we go to mine XMR in France the hash rate was about 44 mega hash and it dropped down to 18 or 19 mega hash. Go to F2 pool in China. Okay, here we go. China, ASIC miners. So we were at 49, 50 mega hash and it dropped down to about 12 mega hash. And you go to waterhole.io. <laughs> this was at 76 mega hash. And now it's back down to 13 mega hash. So tell me, how much... How much ASICs were on on this on this pool right here, guys? Waterhole.io. Can you guys tell me? 76 mega hash down to 13 mega hash now. That's huge. That is huge. And I'm not even accounting all these other ones, all these other pools down here. There's so many other pools that are like not even available, not even able to mine it because they're probably uh, botnets or whatnot. There's so many pools here that have just dropped off. Uh, so, yeah, interesting to see. Pretty funny, pretty funny. Monero. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, I'm going to explain basically the hash rate. A lot of people are wondering, oh, how come the hash rate still says 900 or 700? Well, that's because <clears throat> uh, the block times uh, the block times are now going <clears throat> a lot uh, a lot longer and also as you can see the hard fork happened here at 178 uh, uh, 1 million seven hundred eighty eight thousand so at the block here this was this happened on March 9th at uh, this is eight o'clock and eight eight twelve at nighttime so now uh now we go up to the latest blocks here let's refresh this here if you guys are wondering this is the monero blocks.info this is the this is the block explorer for monero so as you guys can see now we are at 1,788,092 blocks so we've only gone 92 blocks since the hard fork and so i'm going to explain here uh, if you're wondering why <coughs> the difficulty adjustment hasn't really adjusted yet is because uh, this ex explanation here the adjustment algorithm examines 720 blocks uh, prior blocks starting from 15 blocks ago so <coughs> we need another six to seven hundred blocks in order to have a good uh, adjustment uh, read on the difficulty so it'll it'll take it'll take time. I'm not gonna read through all this, but I'll have this link down below. You guys can can read it. Uh, of those 720 blocks, the hot the 60 highest and lowest block times are excluded from the analysis, which leaves 600 blocks. So yeah. Uh, this 
This mega hash here, you guys can see it says 699 and as well on uh, mining pool stats, it says around 700. In about 600, 700 blocks, this will average out. So you guys will you guys will see the proper hash rate difficulty in I would say a couple days. Yeah, it would be a couple days. Okay, next up, guys, I want to talk about is uh, oh <laughs> yeah, here's a Reddit post um, on r slash Monero mining. Uh, well, guys, we are one giga hash network hash rate above one giga hash and there's the picture it shows that the <laughs> Monero was going up one giga hash because of ASICs okay um, oh so now uh, guys I want to just show you guys I've been finding this information on r slash Monero and also r slash Monero mining if you guys want to read more th th there's a lot of good information here and just miners and some really cool rig pics of people posting stuff. One notable one I really I really want to talk about is this: um, <clears throat> uh, a gentleman on Monero Mining uh, opened up their Vega rig, and they're getting a Vega 64s, and they're getting two kilohash <clears throat> on uh, a 2,000 kilohash on the uh, the new Kryptonite R algorithm. So a total of 12.48 kilohash on mining uh, the new Monero algorithm. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, guys, this is uh, the next half of the video. I'm just gonna be explaining what the hard fork entailed. You guys can close it now if you're not interested, but I'll have this link down below if you wanna read it yourself. But I'm just gonna go through and read a couple of things here. What the uh, Monero hard fork that just happened it's called boron butterfly. I'm not sure if I said that right. Boron, borane, boron. Uh, so this is the 0 0.140 release of the Monero software. This is a major release due to the March 9th network update, which in turn adds a new proof of work based on Kryptonite R, adds a new block weight algorithm, and introduces slightly more efficient ring CT format I'm going to explain that in the next page here, what, like Kryptonite N4 algorithm. Uh, this is an intermediary stable release specifically for the network update and does not re represent the bulk of the effort on Monero for over the past six months. That effort will be in the 0.14.1 release, which will follow in March after the network update. Okay, so guys, this is the highlights that happened in the major release here. So you guys all know the new proof of work based on Kryptonite R, a new block weight algorithm, new slightly more efficient ring CT format, placeholder for short payment ID to increase transaction uniformity, Ob obsolete long payment IDs are now disabled unless a switch is used, new event notifications for large block uh, rate changes and blockchain re reorgs, unmixable outputs can be spent again, Fix bad prune transactions, JSON and RPC. Fix some build fixes, some build fixes for various platforms and setups, and a fix for crash on exit. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, so now that was the that's what entailed in the hard fork. <clears throat> now I'm gonna talk about the Kryptonite variant for AKA Kryptonite R. So this is on the GitHub for Monero project. So this was a proposal that was put in place I would say I think February 4th okay so uh, this proposal for the next Monero proof of work algorithm uh, basically uh, program is sized between 60 and 69 instructions 63 instructions on average uh, there are nine registers named 08 <laughs> r0-r8 registers 0 R0 dash R3 are variable registers. R4 dash R8 are constant and can only be used as a source register in each instruction. Okay, uh, the main part I want to get back, uh, down here is uh, the the random sequence changes every block. Block height is used as a seed for random number generator. This allows CPU GPU miners to pre-compile optimized code for each block. It also allows to verify optimized code for future blocks against reference implementation. So it'll be guaranteed safe to use in Monero daemon wallet software. Okay, so uh, that pretty much helps with ASIC resistance stuff. So I'm gonna go down 
here. Okay, the performance uh, CPU, GPU, and ASIC. So Kryptonite parameters were chosen to have the same hash rate as Kryptonite V2 on CPU, GPU, and have a bit smaller power consumption on CPU and GPU. Okay, so the Kryptonite R is hopefully a little bit better uh, in terms of power efficiency. Um, actual numbers, hash rate, and power consumption for different CPU and GPUs are available here. I'm going to open this up. You guys can also look at it here and see all the different hash rates for the, the new Kryptonite R. I'll have this link down below. Uh, but ASICs will have to implement some simple and minimalistic, minimalistic instruction decoder and execution pump pipeline. So we're talking about what ASICs will have to do in order to mine on this Kryptonite R algorithm. While it's not impossible, so it's still possible that ASICs can mine, it's harder to create efficient out-of-order pipeline which can track all data dependencies and do more than one instruction per cycle. It will also have to use fixed clock cycle length, just like CPU. So for example, XOR, single logic gate, won't be much faster anymore. Uh, ASIC with external memories will have the same performance as they did on Kryptonite V2, but they will require much more chip area to implement multiple CPU-like execution pipelines. So uh, that sentence there, I'm assuming the ASICs will have to have more memory uh, on their ASIC chips. So ASIC with on-chip memory will get 2.5 to 3.5 times, times slower due to increased math latency and randomness. And they will also require more chip area. <laughs> Great. So ASIC resistance is there. And basically, if China wants to get on the, the bandwagon of mining Monero, they'll have to create new ASICs, basically, and spend a bunch more money doing it. All right, guys. Uh, last thing I want to talk about. So basically, now that the hash rate has dropped considerably, considerably, the block times are going up. So there's bitinfocharts.com. Uh, as you can see, the block block times were about uh, two minutes. Is this in minutes? E I believe it is. Well, we can we can go check the block times here. Let's go down to before the hard fork. So one million seven hundred eighty-eight thousand and one million seven hundred eighty-eight. 87,999 and each block was about two minutes. Yeah, two minutes. So this is in minutes and now the blocks are going up. As you can see, the next block was 16 minutes, uh, four minutes, one minute, seven minutes. It's pretty sporadic. So it'll even out in a couple days. So yeah, the block times are going up. Now the next thing, I want, final thing I'll talk about, guys, is the price. Let's just see what coin market cap Monero, as you guys can see, has not budged or anything. It's actually gone down two percent, but everything else kind of went down. So, uh, in terms of price, nothing really happened. Okay, the last thing, guys, is what to mine. You guys are probably wondering if what to mine is showing the uh, profitability on on itself. So. It's not going to show it yet because it's 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 test they're in the testing phase because of the hash rate and the difficulty and network and block times and all that stuff. It's not able they're not able to calculate that yet sufficient efficiently. So give it a couple days and I'm sure what to mine will show it and all the other profitability calculators. Uh, so yeah, example I did my uh, AMD rig four thousand hash. Uh, it's, it's showing I'm mining 0 0.009704 a day. I don't think that's correct. So uh, give it a couple days, guys, and we'll see. Okay, guys, please, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, let me know what you guys think down below. If there's going to be a lot more ASICs uh, in the future coming out, probably, or FPGAs. You guys, I showed you guys in the beginning the hash rate dropped just massively, and all these all these uh, China pools dropped massive hash rates. So let me know what you guys think. Please like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all of you.